Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm in the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area again. But in order to get there, you've got to go under a tunnel under the freaking ocean, man. That was crazy. I don't know if you guys live in this area, ever been to this area, but that is a crazy feat of modern engineering. You go under the water. This is where I was staying for the week when I was down there. Um, beautiful area here in uh, Virginia Beach had a luxurious uh, a little condo here on the ocean. And uh, this was my view for the weekend. All of these houses you see out here, $10,000 a week to rent these individual homes out here. Absolutely insane. Right there on the beach, beautiful. Every single one of these places has a pool. To the right's the ocean, to the left's the bay. And right here you're looking at peak performance. This is a, this is what, you know, when success um, and, and skill meet is, is, is when you see something like that. That's peak performance. But hold on a minute. There was something in the water. It, it wasn't sharks. It was freaking dolphins coming up right to the, right to the shore. It was awesome. But let's get back to comic books. The reason why you're all are here. First off, it's Zeno's Comics and Books. And like I said, this is in the Norfolk area. Hey, how's it going? There's Sticky Goose there, a.k.a. Mr. Strap on himself. We're buzzing around here in the shop. Um, right off the bat, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a whole lot of back issues. Go back here and see some uh, graphic novels. It was crossed by Garth Ennis, all these different writers on that. I, I was like, I have never seen that before in my life. It was $5. This place had all the new uh, Fresh Ink comic books for the week. Um, so this is very likely a shop that was existing probably exclusively on new comic book day. Taking a look here in the back issues, I'm seeing some ALF. And you know me, I'm always looking for that uh, the ALF uh, and the SEAL comic. If you know, then you know. They had some old Silver Age books, some House of Secrets, early House of Secrets, which I thought was really cool. Mystery in Space, Tales of the Unexpected, um, a lot of just miscellaneous horror stuff, some, some Golden Age stuff, Metal Men. What do you know? All DC. Nobody's touching the DC. They're all looking for those hot Marvel MCU spec books. Hold up. Wait a minute. Barack Obama. He was in there. I can't remember if that was the first print or if that book's had multiple printings. Uh, there was some underground comics, including this, this Weird Tales magazine, which was really cool. Did not end up buying anything. So I go to Trilogy Comics. Hi there. Can I, can I film in here or no? What? Can I film? I have a YouTube channel and I'm going to all the comic shops. Okay, thank you. Little touch and go there uh, for a minute. Didn't know if uh, the filming was going to be allowed to take place in here. Um, I'm afraid I, I I don't know if I put that that gentleman's head into a mental pretzel. I, I didn't mean to, but sometimes when you come in and you got a strap on on you, you know, people get they get scared and you know people have privacy concerns. Uh, I go in here. And all of these books in these long boxes, I mean, most of these are not, I don't even think a lot of those have boards, really packed tight in here. So this is the other part of Trilogy Comics. So if you guys watched my other video, um, this is the second of the three shops and the other one being the, the big flagship shop. And when I came in, I was kind of talking to the guy, I was like, you know, I was asking him, you know, the same questions. Do you have like Silver Age key books? Do you have, you know, old older stuff? And um, he said they had a lot of that over at their other store. And I said, well, well, the gentleman had a lot of issues getting to those books. And he kind of clammed up, didn't say anything, which I, I get it. That's his business partner or whatever. He's not going to talk smack about, you know, where your bread's buttered. But uh, they had a dollar book uh lot here, a lot of dollar books, several long boxes, 
And there were some newer titles in there, which I always like seeing that instead of them being $3.99 when they didn't sell. This was a pretty nice little shop. You know, this would be a good place to come get, uh, you know, trades or um, find some some books to, to fill, uh, fill some runs, fill some gaps in your runs or to buy new books, but didn't have anything I was looking for there. The next place... This turned out to be kind of like a game store. I think this is uh, Atlantic or Atlantean or I don't even remember the name of this place. This was um, in Norfolk in getting close to Hampton. There was a couple of these stores. And again, if this was a, a place I lived near, I would be going here and playing Magic the Gathering. This was an awesome uh, store for that. They had all these singles they they did have some some comics here and as you can kind of see looking through the long boxes you know a lot of it was um you know the new stuff stuff that uh just comes out every week fresh ink stuff and they were putting them in those those bins a lot of miniatures a lot of D, &D stuff all these singles and they had a really nice thing which you'll see here in a minute which was a little kiosk where you could actually see the inventory they had. This place really reminded me of an, a place in Roanoke uh, called Star City Games. They're like one of these big companies that uh, buy and sell uh, trading card games, specifically Magic the Gathering. And here's the kiosk I was talking about. Um, uh, they were uh, really, really friendly um, as far as like helping me and uh, you know, showing me, um, you know, what they had. And, and this kiosk basically was letting letting customers know what comics they had in stock. And they had some slabs apparently at the other location. So unfortunately, I chose the wrong one and got unlucky. The next place I was going to was Bella Books Comics and Toys. And uh, two young guys uh, running this shop, very nice. But I quickly see that this is a, you know, a Funko Pop and a Squishy and a book bag place. Uh, they did have some graphic novels and some manga and stuff in the back. Just watching these videos back, man, I, I talk with my hands a lot. I'm like theatrical when I speak. I don't know. Maybe I need to like not do that. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like when I'm, when I'm talking with my hands, I, I'm... I'm saying things with purpose. This was about the extent of the comic books, but man, they had all these cool like figures, these NECA figures. There was like this Frankenstein accessory set. You could make like little displays. God, I can't get into any more uh, hobbies or collectibles, but man, that looked cool. Um, every Funko Pop known to man. And guys, I'm just going to say this about the Funko Pops. They're the next Beanie Babies. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I get on my phone and I'm looking for this next spot. There was a sp supposed to be this place called Pink Moon Comics. Well, it takes me to this like uh, residential area. And I'm telling you, if I had gone in Pink Moon Comics, I would have been somebody's lampshade or something. Like, I'd have been that guy's new coat. So I'm kind of discouraged at this point. I'm like, I haven't found a single thing until I found this place. This random antique mall that said they had comics. Yeah, they had comics, okay. And they had some good ones. Um, I start seeing the stuff in there. I'm like, Silver Age ASM, Silver Age Thor, uh, uh, Silver Age um, X-Men, Fantastic Four, first appearances I'm like I, I, I okay we gotta start going through this now the big issue with this was I had to keep going and asking them to unlock the, the thing so I go in there get a book and then they would like lock the thing back up and then we had to keep doing this song and dance when you go to these antique malls I've kind of said this before these people are not the owners of this stuff so they are selling this for the dealer 
then they, these ladies started playing this game where they wanted to be the ones to take it out of the bag and stuff. And, and, and I mean, this, this lady almost had a tape pull. No experience with comics. Um, and uh, it, was, it was making me nervous because I was like, I'm going to buy this book. And this is first Jimmy, uh, first Jimmy Olsen, first Dark Side. This is the only Jimmy Olsen book that's worth a crap. And it's, it's, a, good, it's a good one. Um, so I was like, I'm definitely interested in that. At one point, she starts like putting it back in the bag, and I mean, this this poor lady, I mean, she was, I mean, it was like pulling teeth, like trying to get that book back in the bag, and I'm I'm like standing there, like, please just stop, just stop, let me let me do that because I'm I'm about to buy this book, and I don't want it damaged even more than it already is this is this is her trying to put the thing oh god god bless her i was like let me just do it and uh she was very northern um and uh didn't seem like she had a lot of patience she would go back behind the counter and talk crap about uh other customers when i was there so this was not a relaxing uh, buying experience in any way because I was not only fighting the situation of I got to get back in here, get back in the case. I have to have them unlock the case. I go back in there. It was like they were tearing up the books, tape pulls and crap. I was like, if I can just get out of here with the stuff that I want, not damaged any more than it already is, I, I, I'm going to be doing great. A couple of these short boxes I'm digging through, they had major titles. You guys saw I pulled out this Thor giant size book. I get confused with that book every freaking time I see it. It's not the first appearance of the uh, Destroyers. Every time I see that, I think it is, but it, it's it's not. I actually had that book pulled aside, and then I came back and was like, yeah, I don't actually want that book. I, I was I was confused. <laughs> It is so hard to to remember so much stuff. And I was trying to look up some stuff in here, but the internet was crap. So I was like, oh man, I got the deck stacked against me. I got the Northerners messing up my comics I'm trying to buy. I'm fighting the glass. But we pulled through, ladies and gentlemen. We pulled through um, some nice ASM books in here. Uh, for Spider-Man 2099. That book is a tough book to get a 9.8 in. Um, it's oversized, and so often the corners are kind of screwed up. This is a Neil Adams uh, Superman book. I have a copy of this already, but I would love a nicer copy, and unfortunately this was not a nicer copy. As I was looking through a lot of these books, these books were solid. Uh, no issues with staples, um, you know, uh, no, nothing crazy, like, uh, huge defects in the books. Like these books were like solid books. This is what I was talking about. Yeah. It's like, who are the destroyers? And like, they're on the cover. That's not the first appearance of the destroyers. And I cannot remember what the first appearance is. I can't remember if that's in journey into mystery or the actual Thor run. Somebody help me out in the comments. But uh, thank goodness I didn't buy that book because one, I already have it here. I keep going back to the glass. I keep going back and I keep seeing stuff. I'm like, I, honestly, I wanted to take every single book out of this and <laughs> look at every single one of them because realistically, if, if the condition was right, because the prices were good, like, I wouldn't have spent all this time and taken all this time. Um, I know you guys can't really see the price stickers at this point, but I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm spending some time in here. And then I saw, I was like, these Silver Age Jack Kirby Thor books and these, you know, I mean, the Journey into Mystery book. And then there's another Neil Adams uh, Kryptonite uh, Superman cover. I'm like this is this is the stuff I want. Jack Kirby and Neil Adams, man, that is that is where I'm at right now with my collecting. This that journey into mystery was thirty five dollars. I can see that there. That was not a key, but again, it's a 
it's a freaking journey, a Silver Age journey in a mystery book. It's 110. Um, journey into Mystery 110. This was a pretty decent copy of this Kryptonite book. Now, this, this one was a little overpriced. That's a nice book. Now, when, you, when you're going to these, there's no discounts. Like, I think it said like 10% off all orange tagged books, but there was no haggling. I asked if there was any more comics in the Antique Mall, and they said that there's another pile of $2 books in the back here. And I go back there, and as you can see, I mean, they're just, they're just piled on top of each other. Um, and it's, it's kind of unfortunate. Um, you know, I mean, these could have realistically probably fit in one short box. And it's just sad because, you know, there's some books in here that some people might want and them just all getting crunched on top of each other like that. It just sucks. A lot of 90s stuff in here. Animal Man book right there. It's not the Grant Morrison run Animal Man. That's that's when the next guy takes over. There's some uh, Nom books. Probably should have got that from my dad. He's the big war book guy. And then like every dollar and two dollar pile, there's Star Trek books. I, I I know a lot of the a lot of you guys like these Star Trek books, but it's really just not something I collect. And then there was this other bundle. And then there was weird, like at the very bottom of this pile, there was like um, these like th there it was right there. This the Donny Cates uh, Thor from like last year. So I was like, I was kept digging through this and I was like, I mean, I don't know what could be in here. I was like, is there a first Black Winter in here? I was like, oh my God. But anyway, we're back at the Sticky Goose Man Cave and we bought a bunch of books. Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, first appearance of Dark Side. Uh, this is, I think it's issue number 134. This book's got some issues with it. So um, I... 134, yeah. I paid $84 for this book. Um, if that didn't have that, like that chew, or I don't, I don't know what that is. That chipping, I don't think that's rat chew because they would have chewed all the way through the book. But man, if it didn't have that, this book would be like, a, like a seven-ish type book. I mean, because that cover is clean. All these books that I'm about to show you are complete. Nice pages. There's first there's first dark side back there. And a lot of people consider this kind of a cameo and then the Forever People won the first full appearance. I have that book in a 5.0. Um, but this kind of is accepted as Dark Side's first true appearance. He, you know, his his face is there, he speaks, and he's named. The next one I got was Superman 127, 10 cent issue. This is not a Golden Age book, but man, it's close. This is the first appearance of Titano. Look at the quality of this book, man. The colors are still there. This is a great cover. He's got these glasses. He's uh, He's got the kryptonite uh, vision. The back of this book is beautiful. Um, there, is a, there is a couple issues with this book, which I'll, I'll show you in the inside cover here. Somebody's put some tape um, on the inside cover, unfortunately, to try to kind of patch a couple of these tears. This book is from 1959. Um, this is this is right there, probably like my top five oldest books I have in my collection now. Nice books here. Uh, this is Thor 160. So uh, this is a great Galactus book. These are these these Galactus keys have kind of taken a dip because everything is kind of you know like taking a dip at just overall. But man, these are the type of books that once Galactus becomes like a household name, these are the type of books that explode. Man, this is a solid book. And then we've got uh, Thor 162. So 160 was the origin of Galactus. And then this is just a great Galactus cover. And I, I mean, when I was taking these out of the bags, I was like, 
oh my God, these are in such good shape. You know, I'll pay $20, $30 for books like this all day. When they're in that low, low grade, you know, that like 25, 30, 35, I just don't love getting, I don't love spending like $30, $40 for books like that. Um, Unless they're like big, big books, but books like this. I mean, this is like when Sif becomes has the, takes the appearance of what we would know. We know her later on. It's not her first appearance, but it's the first appearance of her new her new look. And uh, forgive me, but my Thor knowledge is limited, especially from this Silver Age, like of the first appearances and and you know, all the firsts and all this, but I definitely have an appreciation for this Jack Kirby Thor era. And man, this is a nice book here. This is a classic cover. Thor 127, Odin and Thor cover. This was $52, and I think it was worth every single penny, man. Look at the quality of this book. Um, with a clean and a press, 6 six zero. Maybe is nice, nice book. It's just it's just a treat to see Silver Age books in this type of condition. I mean that that is borderline white pages. I mean it it may be off white to white pages. It's just so cool to see Silver Age books in that kind of condition, especially in an antique mall. Journey into Mystery one twenty one. This is an Absorbing Man key. Great Absorbing Man cover. And honestly, an iconic Absorbing Man cover. Um, I would love to get first appearance of Absorbing Man. And that's a very doable book. Uh, it's, you know, that, that book is definitely around. He's kind of a Hulk villain and a Thor villain. This one's got a couple more issues, kind of got a little chunk out of the bottom there, and he's got a tear on the back of the spine, but this is one of the last issues of uh, Journey into Mystery, and uh, I'm just so happy to own it in the collection now. A couple more books here, and uh, they, are, they are treats. This is, this is the last one. Usagi Yojimbo. Number one, this is Usagi Ojimbo in his first solo st- series. Stan Sakai, um, it's his, it's his creation, it's his masterpiece. This is a clean book. You've got a couple spine ticks there, but these corners are sharp. This, this is a possible like nine four type book. And I got this book, I think it was $86. This is a rare book. Now you have to be careful, $84. You have to be careful with this book because there's multiple printings. But you need to do yourself a favor. If you have not read Usagi Yojimbo, you need to read it. It is the perfect comic book where it's it's one of those things you pick up, you could pick up and read one issue or you could read 100 issues and enjoy it all the same. It's it, They're good, just standalone. They have kind of like parables in them or little lessons. And if you love like feudal Japan and samurai and ninjas and martial arts and kung fu, you're going to love this. And just Usagi Ojimbo, it's so funny. It's, um, it is a, it is a fantastic classic comic book. I'm probably going to have to get this book, book graded. This is this is kind of like a wall book for me. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If any point in time you like this video, give the thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.